What supplies do you need to get started growing mushrooms? How much does it cost? Is Uncle Ben actually a good starting point? These are some of the questions I will be answering in today's video. What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are having a brilliant day. So in today's video, we will be discussing and going over the necessary supplies to get started in mushroom cultivation. But first, let's get the prices out of the way because I know this is why a lot of you are probably probably clicked on this video, right? So how much will it cost? Well, before we dig into that question, I would just like you all to know that I have compiled the full list of supplies and equipment you will need on my Amazon page. I have picked the most cost-effective but quality supplies for my list. The only thing I will buy outside of Amazon are quart-sized mason jars as they are overpriced on Amazon. The link is in the description. So back to the question, how much does it cost? That's a bit of a loaded question because it can be as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be. For example, it can be cheap if you're lucky enough to find a pressure cooker or an instant pot, which by the way, will be your biggest expense, either for free or for cheap. The good thing about the instant pot is that a lot of households already have one lying around. I've been in this situation so many times when I have asked my mentorship students if they have a pressure cooker and they usually say no. Then I ask if they have an instant pot and more often than not, they say, yeah, I have one of those lying around. So if you already happen to have one in your house, congratulations, you're almost good to go. Now, the same can be said for other common household items like aluminum foil and masks. You may already have some lying around, so you can cut that out of your costs as well if you do. So, you know, because of this variance between everybody's situation, I will simply give you guys the cost of a brand new Instant Pot and Dehydrator on Amazon, which will be two of your biggest expenses and the most important purchases you will probably ever make in this hobby, period. The total comes out to $190 with no discount for a brand new 8-quart Instant Pot and a suitable dehydrator. That's the total cost, right? Uh, you can get a 6-quart or even a 3-quart Instant Pot for significantly cheaper. Uh, I believe the 6-quart is at $100 rather than $150 for the 8-quart. But if you're starting this hobby today, I strongly recommend you to pick up the 8-quart Instant Pot or whatever the largest size is available when you're watching this video rather than the 6-quart. And just forget about the 3-quart. It's just it's basically a non-option as far as I'm concerned, because you'll, you'll probably only be able to do one quart jar at a time. You will thank yourself later when you can do four quart jars per run with the eight quart versus two with the six quart. Time is money and time adds up. All the instant pot models available today will work. They even have a 15 PSI version, but it is only limited to six quarts in size and is currently the same price as the eight quart model. The only benefit to the 15 PSI model is shorter sterilization times, but even taking that into account, you will not be saving as much time and therefore money as getting the 8-quart model and doing double the grains per run. You can try your luck with Uncle Ben's tech, by the way, um, and the upfront costs will be cheaper as you will not need to get an instant pot or a pressure cooker because the bags are already sterile but the bags are ridiculously overpriced and the costs will add up very quickly if you're going to do more than a few grows. In addition to all the pitfalls of that tech, such as increased rates of contamination and having less overall control over your grow, you will fully be at the mercy of Uncle Ben. Once you go grain, you never go Ben. It doesn't rhyme, but it's simply the truth. At Mycophilia, we are all about the beauty of simplicity, but also effectiveness. In other words, the tech must be effective and the cost to result ratio sensible. Everybody loves a good bargain, but when the full picture of the Benz tech is considered, it is actually far cheaper and far more effective to make your own grains, as I will show you in this series. Now, I'd like to focus my attention back on the Instant Pot. You don't need an Instant Pot. You can buy a pressure cooker, but I highly recommend the Instant Pot for its ease of use non-conspicuous nature, safety, and versatility. I call it the Swiss Army knife of mycology for its ability to pa easily pasteurize nutritious substrates and casing layers, which are things you will need to get into if you're looking to eventually grow some tastier, exotic species than your typical coral lover. Basically, if you have an Instant Pot, you are set in this hobby for sterilization and pasteurization. 
There are other electric pressure cookers out there, but in a study that tested a number of electric pressure cookers and their abilities to kill heat-resistant spores, which, by the way, they did to test the potential of their uses as autoclaves in the labs of developing countries, only the Instant Pot was able to neutralize these spores. This is why I recommend the Instant Pot in particular, as I know they work very well for mycology. I'm sure there are some similar products out there that can do the same thing, but the Instant Pot, I know for a fact, is a sure thing. If you're interested in learning in more detail about how exactly I use the Instant Pot in mycology, I have linked a video in the description showing just that. So let's get right to the rest of the supplies now that we have gotten the most important and expensive pieces of equipment out of the way. As you can see, I have split my list into four separate categories, so you can easily visualize what each item is for. We will first start with inoculant, or in other words, genetics. With genetics, it is absolutely paramount that you get high quality material to start with. What this comes down to is two things. The first is cleanliness. Was it prepared following all the precautions necessary to limit contamination? And two, quality. In other words, if you provide the ideal conditions for your mushrooms, can the genetics actually make the most out of it to give you a decent flush? My genetics affiliate ticks all of these checkboxes. Their link is in the description and you will always get a 10% discount if you use the code mycophilia at checkout. You can also get genetics directly from yours truly for microscopy purposes, of course, by sending me an email at mycophilia.official at gmail.com, also in the description. Keep in mind though that I currently only stock spore swabs, not syringes. I also do paid mentoring for most skill levels, so if you would like an experienced guide to lead you to success from the get-go or would like to level up your game, you can contact me through the same email. Now, let's get to spawn. We will be using brown rice for our tech as it is easily accessible, clean, and highly nutritious. Just buy classic long grain brown rice. Avoid parboiled rice and avoid Asian sticky slash sushi rice. Basmati rice also works completely fine. Uh, those, that's like the long skinny ones. Uh, you will just have to reduce the simmer time. Next, we will need quart sized mason jars to be used for storing both our spawn and dried mushrooms later on. Both regular and wide mouth jars are suitable. Next, we will need micropore tape which we will use as an easy and effective gas exchange filter for our jars. But before we can even talk about filters, we will need to make a small hole in the jar lids. Nowadays, I only use unmodified lids, so no holes at all. But because we will be using syringes rather than agar for your first grow, we will have to make some holes. I personally find that a hole punch, you know, the type that's used for making holes in leather belts, the easiest, but you can also use a drill or even a hammer and a nail. Basically, all you need to do is make a hole. So uh, let's move on. Okay, so fruiting and storage, right? We will be using shoe boxes for our tech. So you will need to get yourself some six quart shoe boxes. That's right, six quarts, not 12 quarts. Brand does not matter along with the type of lid it has. Clamped or non-clamped, it really doesn't matter. I get asked that often, but it really doesn't matter. In fact, you don't even need a lid. You can use a grocery bag instead. Next, you will need to pick up some cocoa core, coconut core, right? As that will be our substrate. That's right, no CVG as it is outdated and its benefits highly ambiguous. Not all core is made equal. And by the way, I have made a di video discussing what the best types of core are to buy and what to watch out for. I will also link that video in the description. And it also goes without saying, uh, the core that I have listed on Amazon is Primo for our purposes. And also, if you're going to be buying it yourself, make sure you don't confuse coconut husk for coconut core. You want the coconut core. This is a mistake I often see beginners make. Next, you will also need a 5-gallon bucket with a lid. I don't recommend getting one smaller than 5 gallons. We will use this to prepare our core by mixing hot water and the dry core via the bucket tech. You might have heard of it already. I recommend the orange Home Depot buckets as everyone generally knows what I mean um, by that if you are in the US and they work great. I personally though use an igloo cooler. Next we will need three fine misters. One will be used for misting our substrates, 
and another will be used to store our disinfectant of choice, and the last will hold soapy water for when we eventually start using still air boxes down the line. But we won't use that for a while, so you really only need two sprayers for your first grow. After that, we will need some silica gel packets for storing our mushrooms long term. And finally, the dehydrator. This is absolutely vital. Don't think you can cheap out on this. This is the most important bit for long-term storage of your, of your produce. I have seen so many people over the years that have wasted their crop because they tried to cheap out on this vital part of the whole process. What's the point of growing mushrooms if you can't store them for any longer than one week? Dehydrators are affordable and a necessary part of the whole process. If you feel that you don't have the funds to purchase this currently, then save your money until you do before you start growing. There are no such things as shortcuts in this hobby. Simplicity, absolutely. Shortcuts, no. When picking up a dehydrator, be sure to get one that has a fan. As always, the one in my Amazon list is fantastic for our purposes. And finally, we arrive at sterilization and sanitization. We've already gone over the Instant Pot in depth, so I will skip over that for the disinfectant. Um, so in terms of disinfectants, you have two choices, isopropyl alcohol or HOCl, aka hypochlorous acid. I have recently switched to HOCl and I have not looked back. I will make a separate video eventually dedicated to the virtues of HOCl, but in short, you will never have to buy alcohol again if you purchase an HOCl generator. All you will need is a little sea salt to whip up one of the most effective and safest disinfectants available, far more effective and safe than alcohol is. Plus, it is also non-toxic to our bodies and costs nothing once you buy yourself a generator. However, if you do choose to go this route, only buy the generator that I have linked in my shopping list, as the cheaper ones are dangerous because they are producing bleach instead of HOCl, in addition to potentially releasing heavy metals into your solution. And there's also another one out, um, that's not in my shopping list. Uh, I believe Life Labs makes one. That one's also legit, although not as good uh, because they don't use titanium for the electrolysis. Um, so the one that I have is good, but also the Life Labs one uh, will also work. If a proper safe HOCL generator is currently out of your budget, then skip it and get yourself a bottle of isopropyl alcohol instead for now. The next item on our list are gloves. Just buy nitrile non-steroid gloves. I recommend nitrile because they are far more durable than vinyl, which means you can reuse them a few times before disposing of them and save yourself quite a bit of money that way. And now we come to masks. Just get regular surgical masks, the same type that was in vogue during the coup. There is no need to use N95 masks. And following this, we will need something to sterilize our syringe with. I put down blowtorch and butane on our list to future-proof yourself for sterilizing scalpels when we get to doing agar work, but a regular old Bic lighter or Zippo lighter will be suitable for your first experience, your first grow. And finally, we come down to foil. Aluminum foil is something you cannot get away with uh, in this hobby as it is useful in almost every step of the cultivation process in one way or another. And guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you all found this educational and helpful and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified of future video updates. Give this video a like and a comment if you would like to help out this channel. And in the description, I have listed a bunch of discount codes from the top vendors in mycology, from filters, grains, substrates, and genetics. They are all SAGE approved. If you would like private one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions with me, or would like to purchase my carefully curated high-quality genetics, you can contact me through my email at mycophilia.official at gmail.com. They're all very competitively priced. I also have a Patreon where I post all of my fruiting videos for free, also in the description, naturally. Thank you guys all for watching and I hope you guys have a great day or night. I will see you guys in the next video. Michael File Sage, checking out for now.
Thank you.